Conveyor belts are the primary method of material haulage at many surface mines. This equipment might be as simple as a single belt at a small mine, or a series of belts transporting material over a long distance, or from multiple sources at a large mining operation. All belt conveyors have inherent dangers while in motion, and may have certain hazards when they are idle. The risk to workers can be reduced by following safe work practices during operation and maintenance, and by installing proper physical safeguards on the equipment. Although conveyors vary by size, tonnage capacity, and speed, the basic safety practices required at mines are very similar throughout the industry. A number of fatal accidents and serious injuries involving conveyor belts have occurred each year for decades. These accidents occur while performing work activities such as inspections, making adjustments, minor and major maintenance, and cleaning. These accidents happen despite the awareness of the danger presented by the conveyor equipment. Attitude has a lot to do with your job performance. Don't bring your problems, worries, or preoccupations with you to the job. This will only increase the possibility of injury. Concentrate on your job and doing your job safely. Conveyor belts and equipment should be included in the workplace examination performed each shift. Such examination would reveal any conditions that might affect the safety of workers. A competent person conducting the examination would focus on all items covered by the MSHA standards that pertain to belt conveyors, and all are equally important. A properly designed and installed guard is substantial in construction, can withstand shock and vibration, is securely mounted in place, and prevents persons from reaching under or around the guard to access moving parts. Guards with holes or sharp edges can actually cause injury and shall be repaired or replaced. Many operators color code guards to make it obvious when one is not installed. Areas where overhead drive belts are located may be hazardous, especially if a belt breaks and the ends whip off the pulley. Suitable guards should be installed if it is determined that a hazard exists. Safe access is necessary to conduct a proper equipment examination. This is best facilitated by crossovers, fixed ladders, stairways, and platforms that provide sound footing as well as handholds to retain balance. These access structures should be equipped with proper handrails and tow boards if required. If portable ladders are used to access elevated areas, they should be manufactured to be of the proper height to avoid overreaching, be well maintained, and placed on solid footing. Of course, the worker should ensure the ladder will be placed away from machine and electrical hazards, and tie off the ladder if needed to prevent tipping. Many unguarded conveyors have travelways immediately adjacent to the belts. In this situation, emergency stop devices should be positioned along the length of the conveyor so any person falling on or against the conveyor can deactivate the drive motor and stop the belt. Without the emergency stop devices, the entire length of the travelway should be equipped with railings to prevent persons from falling on the conveyor. This railing, however, is not a guard, so inadvertent contact with the conveyor may still be possible, making the emergency stops a sound safety feature. I'm 32, I have five kids, and I broke my wrist and I fractured my elbow. I got two metal plates in my arm now. Torn muscles and tendons in my arm from a mine accident. The miner was using an aerosol can of belt dressing and he was reaching around the uh, guard. And the, my clothing got caught on the, uh, with the head pull and it caught my arm up. The miner was wearing five layers of clothing that day due to it being cold weather and I feel that the uh, having those layers gave his arm some protection. As fast as head pull goes, that's the fastest it snatched him. It, uh, pulled him on top of the conveyor. And I was constantly moving forward. So as it moved me forward, I was able to turn the uh, stop button off. He reached to the uh, stop button 
and stop the conveyor before he fell into the uh, mixing hopper. Had he fallen into the hopper, injuries certainly would have been fatal. If you're assigned to work around moving parts, before you attempt to do any job, make sure those moving parts are guarded. If you're going to have to remove guards, be sure you lock and tag out that equipment before you do any work. The workplace examiner should consider that flying or falling materials are a hazard to persons when crushers, conveyors, or screens are operating. The potential for this hazard should be assessed and protection such as guards or shields should be installed. Repairs or maintenance of machinery or equipment shall be conducted only after the electrical power has been de-energized and the equipment is blocked against any motion. The MSHA electrical standard requires that power switches be physically locked out by the person doing the work and warning notices or tags be posted at the power switch to advise all affected persons that the work is being done. Locks should have only one key that is controlled by the person performing the work. Once locks and tags are applied, activate the start switches to verify that the power is turned off. Remember, a tag alone does not ensure the safety of a person working on equipment. Locks and tags should be removed only by the person to install them or other authorized persons as part of the lockout and tagout program. Using an emergency stop device as a lockout means is not permitted. Electricity is not the only energy source that may be present at a conveyor belt during maintenance or repair. A detailed risk assessment of the environment and machinery should be done before any work takes place. Potentially hazardous energy may be released from other sources, such as gravity, hydraulic systems, pressurized air systems, mechanical devices, such as springs, or water. Prior to any work beginning, this potential energy should be reduced to zero by all means possible, such as closing valves, bleeding stored pressure in lines, releasing mechanical force, and supporting weight with blocks or hoists. Operators should ensure that inclined conveyors are equipped with a functional backstop or brake to prevent belt reversal by gravity force. The MSHA SLAM program is an effective method to systematically identify and assess hazards in any task. The four steps of the program are stop. Think about the task whether it's new, unusual, or something you've done before. Look. Look around. Think about every job step and what hazards may be present and how those hazards may change as the job progresses. Analyze. Determine your skills and experience to do the job and if you have the right tools and equipment to complete the job safely. Manage. Actively initiate the proper controls to eliminate the hazards. Stay focused on safety until the job is finished. Routine conveyor maintenance functions should be done only by persons who have had detailed task training and have demonstrated their qualifications to do the work. A good preventive maintenance program can avoid unnecessary equipment shutdowns and unscheduled work. Manual cleaning of conveyor pulleys can only be done safely when the conveyor is completely stopped. Never attempt to clear material from a pulley in motion. Applying belt dressings should not be conducted with the conveyor in motion. However, the dressings may be applied by a pressurized applicator as long as the worker can apply the dressing while he is positioned outside the guards. Conveyor systems have many lubrication points that require frequent service. The lubrication application should be done only when the conveyor is not in motion. An alternative practice is where lubrication extension fittings are installed and the lubrication can be done outside the guards. After maintenance or repair, the conveyors should be restarted following established operational procedures. The conveyor operator should visually check the entire length of the conveyor to be sure that all persons are in the clear. If the operator does not have a complete view of the entire conveyor from the starting switch, 
Then an audible or visual warning system should be installed and operated to warn all nearby persons that the conveyor will be started. There should be sufficient time between the alarm and the conveyor startup for exposed workers to move to a safer location. A second signal should be initiated if the conveyor does not start to move within 30 seconds of the first signal. Mine operators that install new belt conveyor systems or upgrade existing equipment can really enhance the safety and efficiencies of the mine operation during the design phase of the project. When the present and future capacities of the conveyors are accurately determined, the overall reliability will increase and result in less downtime. We know downtime costs money, but it also may create situations where workers are exposed to greater hazards than during normal operations. Safety features should also be designed into a new system. Guards, catwalks, electrical equipment, elevated surfaces, alarms, access points, and emergency equipment are just some of the items that may require detailed fabrication or installation to safeguard the workers that will operate and maintain the conveyors. The installation also has to fit into the topography of the land, another maintenance consideration if equipment is elevated. The structure should be built so that the tail pulleys are above the ground surface, making it easier to install and maintain guards and to clean with water sprays. Mine operators should assess jobs that require employees to work alone in remote areas for extended periods of time. A means to monitor that employee should be established if needed. Early in the design phase, MSHA can be a good resource in providing information on compliance issues pertaining to the new installation. A comprehensive review can address all aspects of equipment and operations, including health matters such as noise and dust. Prior to putting the equipment into production, operational procedures and safety practices should be thoroughly reviewed with all miners to ensure that they are clearly understood. This information should be incorporated into a training program and or a procedures manual for training new miners and newly hired experienced miners. Many persons that were caught in belts or pulleys were performing routine tasks that they have performed for many years. Situational awareness around operating machinery and machine guards are the primary defense against accidents. It was a very nice day out. Uh, there's five employees that were actually working alongside with me on this conveyor as we were building it. We had to test the conveyor belt, make sure that it was running truly on the pulleys. At that time, we seemed to be having a problem with the tracking of the belt. What tracking is, is keeping it centered on these pulleys. I didn't want any of the employees to get in the area where it was very dangerous, so I decided to get back in that area. There was no guards on the pulley at the time. These conveyors were designed where they had to be, the guards had to be off of them to be adjusted. I proceeded to adjust this conveyor belt. The belt was not moving like it should have been moving. So I bent down to take a look and put my hand on the side of the conveyor. Uh, about that time, the conveyor belt had snapped over and grabbed my hand and finger and it started to pull me off balance. Well, I'd stuck my other arm down to catch myself and unfortunately I, I placed it on the bottom of the belt which was traveling in the direction of the tail pulley. Uh, it pulled me right into the tail pulley where it then had uh, started to sever my arm as it went up around the pulley between the belt and the drum itself. And at that time the only thing I could do is protect myself from going in head first. So I pushed myself off to the side, left, the, left my arm, continued to go through it. Uh, it. It went as far as it could go and then that's when it severed it. It's, it pulled the arm apart. I did pick the body part up. I, I did know I was uh, losing a lot of blood at the time. I had hollered for the employees. Um, had one of them jumping straight up and down. The other one had shut the conveyor off. Uh, one in particular was my brother. He was just in shock. He just backed away from me. And the, and the closer I walked towards him, the further he backed away from me. 
So I then went to another employee, told him take their belt off and get this tied off. The arm was actually severed at the elbow in this area here where it had taken it completely off and up under the armpit when it twisted it, it tried to pull it out of the chest cavity. So as high as we got the belt up here, we were able to stop the bleeding. One fellow had went and called uh, emergency assistance to come in and he proceeded to take me over to an area where I could lay down. You, you really don't save any money by taking shortcuts and being unsafe. Emergency medical services responding from outside the mine should know how to reach the site without delay. It was about six o'clock in the evening. We had busted a belt on a conveyor system on a hopper and it had spilled all the material in around the conveyor system and it, as it came down it filled in around the belt. We pulled all the material away from the belt that we could, went ahead and fired back up the asphalt plant and when we did that there was still a large material, a large amount of material laying around the conveyor system so after we got the material up and going I was back there shoveling out from underneath the kit probably five to ten, well, probably five six foot from the tail pulley and as I was shoveling out from around that conveyor system I had a large pair of cuff gloves on and when I was back there shoveling the fasteners on the conveyor system actually grabbed my glove sucked me back into the tail pulley and at that time there was no guarding at all on the tail pulley itself thank goodness it was a smooth tail pulley because when I was wrapped up in the conveyor system, if it had been a self-cleaning pulley, it would have probably killed me. Uh, at that time, my arm just rolled up in there, and nobody knew I was back there. We had no safety devices, no way of shutting the plant down. By coincidence, we ran out of trucks, and they shut the asphalt plant down. And by doing that, it shut the plant down, and the guy that was operating the plant just come out to look around and help me finish shoveling out from underneath there, and he's the one that found me in the conveyor system. Yes, it was completely tore off. I spent 31 days, and thank goodness I run into a doctor who had been in Vietnam, and he was able to start reattaching my arm. And I have full use of it today, but uh, thank goodness for a Vietnam doctor. Conveyors can cause a lot of injuries, and it has in the past. If we're going to stop the conveyor and work on it, lock out, tag out right, lock it for motion. Make sure all those things are done, and uh, we won't have any issues. We just want to make sure that as you work on it, that you think about a work plan of what could go wrong, can go wrong, and know what to do if, if you have to respond to it. That's what we want to make sure you do. Make sure that you're safe with it all the time, because what you do is important to us. If you see your fellow worker doing unsafe practice, point it out to him. You may be the person that saves his life. 